After deadly violent clashes, Albania's Prime Minister warns of a tough response against any attempt by his opponents to unseat him. But what's really behind the latest crisis in the country? Why is the opposition keen to take on the government? And could the situation spiral out of control? This is Inside Story. Welcome to the programme. I'm Sahil Rahman. It's a country that's been racked with political instability, corruption and poverty for much of the last two decades. The latest crisis in Albania has the Conservative Prime Minister, Sali Berisha, facing growing opposition from socialists who accuse his government of abuse of power and a rigged election in 2009. Tensions have been mounting for months now between the two sides and it all erupted into violent clashes last week in the capital Tirana. Three people were shot dead and more than 150 protesters injured at an opposition rally. The socialists, led by Edi Rama, are demanding early elections. Berisha has bluntly rejected that and accused the socialists of trying to stage a coup during that rally. The European Union, which Albania hopes to join one day, is urging the two leaders to resolve their differences peacefully. But what's really behind the current crisis? Is this just a personal power struggle between two men who, according to some reports, have to bust their supporters in from the countryside to attend their rallies? Before we get into that discussion, let's hear from the two leaders themselves as they spoke to our correspondent, Jackie Rowland. 200 to 300 paid people armed with long batons, stones, pistolets, Molotov uh, bombs, bottles, and other facilities. Who gave the order to shoot to kill? You have to shoot on air in case that he persists. You have to shoot on it or him or whatever is. No, no, there is no order. It's not chain of orders here. It's, it's rules everywhere. But the Attorney General asked for these people to be arrested and questioned. You prevented this from happening. Is that not political interference in the judiciary? Was the second the, 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 the stage B of the coup was a stage B of the coup. You're saying the Attorney General is a member of a coup? Absolutely. I'm not saying just myself. Now, fortunately, they are saying many here and abroad. Yes. The elections were not responding to the standards of a NATO member country, of a EU uh, living country, but not yet a member of a country that aim to be part of the democratic world in full terms. The elections were stolen to steal the country. Are you trying to overthrow the Prime Minister? We want him to resign and not to go in his place. But we want this government to give up because this government is, trans is transforming the country again in a place where you cannot live, you cannot breathe, you cannot speak freely if you are not part of the regime. Well, on today's edition of Inside Story, we have in Skopje Sam Vagdin, a former economic advisor to numerous Eastern European and Balkan governments. In London, Mohamed Vilu, he's the UK correspondent of Top Channel, that's an Albanian television station. And in Birmingham, Gizem Albion, a lecturer in sociology at the University of Birmingham. Gentlemen, welcome to Inside Story. Sam Vaknin, can I begin with you in Skopje? Uh, with three confirmed dead in last week's uh, confrontation and a seemingly unsociable an unstable situation between the political parties and, and society as a whole. How serious should we view the events of, what, the past seven days? Well, thank you for having me. Judging by pre precedent, one should not take these events too seriously. It has happened in 1997, it has happened in 1998, where the current besieged Prime Minister, Sali Berisha, attacked his predecessor, a, uh, uh, heading a mob, attacked his predecessor's officers and, and residents and so on and so forth. So, this kind of settling scores by mob rule, ochlocracy, and settling scores by violence seems to be a recurring theme mm. in Albanian politics such as they are. Uh, each and every time the international community intervenes, the European Union, sometimes the United States, and they calm things down and then both parties reach a certain um, understanding 
to save face on the one hand and to satisfy each of the demands on the other. Mm -hmm. And I think that's precisely what's going to happen this time. So okay. I wouldn't be too worried. Okay, However, it, it's an indicator of Albania's lack of ability to mature politically, to develop a, to develop a culture of dialogue and compromise and therefore of its inability ultimately to accede to the European Union. Okay, well, we'll, we'll touch on all of those uh, areas that you've uh, very kindly started us off with. Mohamed uh, Velio, you're the correspondent for Top Channel. It's your channel that uh, recorded uh, the images of a government minister taking bribes. Some would say this is what started all the problems, what, seven days ago. Uh, do you agree with what you're hearing from Scorpier that uh, this is just what happens in Albania and you should take it with a pinch of salt? Well, uh, basically, we should take uh, what's happened on Friday very seriously. Uh, we are talking uh, about 2011. Albania, Albania it's uh, uh, a NATO member is uh, a country which is inspiring to join the European Union. An unprecedented uh, what's happened on Friday for a country in the middle of Europe. Uh, so it's a very, uh, very serious situation. What's happened in 1997 we know very well, but uh, now we have a totally a different situation. Uh, regarding uh, uh, that video where Deputy uh, Prime Minister Ilir Meta was recorded, yes, that's true. That uh, video shown uh, on Top Channel uh, make people realize what's happened behind the doors of uh, government uh, offices. Uh, and yes, the anger uh, was, uh, was huge that day uh, during the rally. Okay, Mohamed, let me bring in... Uh Gizem Alpion, uh, lecturer in sociology in Birmingham. Uh, welcome to Inside Story, sir. Yes, we should take it seriously. No, we shouldn't take it too seriously. Give me an overview of what you think and, and how you see the situation from Birmingham. Good afternoon. Um, I think we should uh, treat it very seriously, but uh, we have to see it in the context of corruption, which uh, uh, has been the cancer of, 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 of the Albanian society. Is Having said too, that, I don't Albania mean to interrupt too quickly into your answer, but is it too quickly, is it too simple to blame corruption over what happened on Friday? Well, uh, I, I think when you go at the bottom of the things, uh, you, you realize that actually Albanians are frustrated over the last uh, 20 years, and I will not lay the blame only with the government exclusively or with the opposition exclusively. I think that Albanians have been let down by their uh, politicians. They should mature. This is the opportunity for them to show leadership. They should sit around the table and discuss it, but they should address the issue of corruption. There is inflation in Albania, there is corruption, there is unemployment, and the Albanian politician should realize that they are servants to their people and they should put an end to corruption, which is found at every level, at the local government and at the heart, at the top of the government. And this is the time for them to realize that the loss of lives on the 21st of January was very unfortunate, but unless they wise up and understand how important the situation is, four people could easily become 40, 400 and 4,000, and that should never happen. Well, let me go to uh, Skopje, actually, because uh, listening to what um, Gizem has to say there, uh, Sam Vaknin, you have a region, an area of Europe, and if I just uh, name a couple of things, the Croatian Prime Minister Ivo Sananda uh, has been arrested in Austria uh, pending extradition over corruption issues. Kosovo's PM is accused by the EU at the moment of a mafia-style organisation uh, uh, and being a ringleader. Montenegro's PM uh, resigned pending charges in an Italian court uh, over basically smuggling cigarettes. The area the area itself seems to become now immune, or the people are becoming immune to seeing their politicians in some sort of corruption type scandal. Uh, how much of a step should Europe have taken to help uh, when, when the Iron Curtain fell, bring them into a free and fair democracy, so to speak? Well, the implicit mistake is using um, West, a language which is typical of uh, Western political institutions. We say conservative prime minister Sali Berisha, socialist opponent Rama, uh, I don't know what, politicians, parliament, public prose prosecu prosecutor. These are institutions and political epithets that are, that are applicable to Germany or to Sweden or to the United States, but they are not applicable to Albania, to Macedonia, to Montenegro, to Bosnia-Herzegovina, to Croatia and to Serbia. 
These countries are ruled not by political parties, not by politicians. They don't have any institutions. They have facades. These facades are pretensions to institutions. They are not real functioning institutions. These countries are ruled by competing kleptocracies. They are ruled by thugs. They are ruled by mafia networks. And these, are the, um, and these mafia networks, these criminal networks and organizations which underlie and constitute the foundations of the political game in all these countries, they are calling the shots. Mm. They are dictating the moves. They are competing for scarce resources. They are organizing cross-border activities. And they also are at the source and at the fount of what is called corruption. Corruption in these countries is a way of allocating economic resources. In the West, we do it via votes in parliament and via democr democratic institutions. In the Balkans, mm. in Albania, in the former republics of Yugoslavia and so on, we do it by using institutions to arrest, to intimidate authoritarian regimes, mm. crime, involving crime in politics and so on and so forth. So these are kleptocracies. We should change our vocabulary. Let's just bring our viewers up to speed and take a step back now and look at some of the events that led up to all of this to help you at home understand today's inside story. In 1991, after decades of iron-fisted communist rule, Albania held its first multi-party elections and a general amnesty was declared for political prisoners. Then, six years later, the collapse of a fraudulent pyramid investment scheme uh, and that collapse cost thousands of Albanians their savings and triggered those widespread protests. Now, Sally Barisha, who was the president at the time, was then forced to resign. Of course, he's now the prime minister. In 2003, Albania entered into its first talks with the European Union with the hope of eventually joining the bloc as a member. And then in 2009, Barisha's centre-right Democratic Party wins parliamentary elections by a narrow margin. But the opposition Socialist Party cried foul and began demonstrations in Tirana saying the vote was rigged. And that same year, Albania became a NATO member. And just two months ago, the EU Commission rejected Albania's membership request, saying it needed more political and fiscal reform. Before we talk about political and fiscal reforms, uh, Mohamed Villu, of course, as a correspondent, you, you know your country inside out. And, and Sam alluded to the fact that the language being used between politicians is vitriolic and perhaps even some might say violent in terms of the translation. A former foreign minister of your country, Besnik Mastafaj, if I've pronounced that correctly, basically said that neither a leader admits to their mistakes or failings and this is poisonous in terms of the rhetoric. How poisonous is it getting now in Albanian politics and what's the impact on the Albanian on the street? Uh, well, I agree with some in some extent, but I'd like to say uh, we cannot uh, steer all Albanian politician or in region with, with the same brush are some people dedicated to work for progress and uh, democracy uh, on their country. Uh, yes, it's true, uh, the language which has been used uh, in past years uh, in Albania from both uh, leaders uh, is not right. But at the same time, the European Union has to be clear uh, with uh, what they are saying, what they are suggesting about uh, Albania. <laughs> Uh, they are using a very uh, diplomatic language, which is not uh, the right language for politicians in Balkan. Uh, they have to be clear. They have to, uh, to tell uh, Albanian politicians or put in sanctions uh, to them. They are not listening. Whatever European community is saying, uh, it's going on a deaf ear, if I can use uh, these uh, this words. Uh, but th in Albania we have a problem with the uh, interference of the politician to the institution. For example, Prime Minister uh, has tried uh, last year to get under control uh, the Albanian Secret Service or some other uh, government body. We've got a current situation where General Prosecutor Office in Albania is trying to do the job, it's trying to investigate what's happened on 21st of January. But Prime Minister is going to the press conferences and telling people, well, uh, uh, the members of Albania National Guard, they did well, they did the right yeah. thing. Well, this is not the language of a Prime Minister to use 
uh, on a, such a delicate uh, situation. And that's what, I mean, again, the, the, the term of language that two of my guests have already used, uh, Gizem Alpion in Birmingham, you know, it is that language, you know, we heard in the clip from the Prime Minister that he said that the, uh, the, the top legal man there uh, was part of the coup, was trying to instigate it. I mean, just those words alone resonate very strongly, do they not, for Albanians? And that is a worry. It is a worry indeed. I think uh, uh, Mr. Berisha should show restraint. That kind of language does not help at all. Um, and uh, restraint should be shown also by the uh, members of the opposition. But I think the bottom line is here that the Deputy Prime Minister, who was apparently uh, was caught uh, on camera giving instructions to a member of the government uh, to do favors to his cronies, um, I don't know how, whether the video is genuine or not, but if the filming is authentic, then I think he should do the right thing. He should resign uh, from any post. I know he has resigned as Deputy Prime Minister. He should resign also as a leader of his party. And this is how he shows leadership, and that's what Albanians need. They are hardworking people, decent people, law-abiding, but they would like to have role models. And um, unfortunately, in Albanian politics, there are three notions which are lacking, and they are responsible government, um, they are also accountability and uh, loyal opposition. Unfortunately, unless the political class will realize these concepts, we will continue to have troubles in Albania. Sam Bankin in, in Skopje, often uh, leaders of countries say to the international community, don't get involved in our internal affairs. Yet Sally Berisha has listened to the international community and cancelled a rally uh, for the weekend. How much of a stronger stance should the international community, especially the EU, take now with Albania? They certainly don't want to see some sort of failed state on their doorstep, do they? Politicians all over the Balkans are leveraging the European Union and other international institutions, not only the European Union, the, uh, the American uh, presence, the American embassy, NATO, uh, the International Monetary Fund, and so on and so forth. Politicians are leveraging the presence of these international institutions and their intentions for enlargement and for incorporation of these countries. They are leveraging it in internal, internecine political fights. So from time to time, one of the political parties will call upon the international community to intervene in order to counter or to oppose the other political party. And then the roles are reversed, and that other political party is calling upon the international community to intervene on its behalf. So the international community is compromised by the very fact that politicians are abusing international, um, international institutions and international uh, frameworks for for domestic political ends and purposes. I must say that the European Union does not want any of these countries as a member. Albania, Macedonia, Bosnia-Herzegovina, Serbia, they are a shambles. They are not countries. They are facades. They are a pretension at a country. The citizens of these countries are not law-abiding. The politicians in these countries are thugs and criminals. The political parties in these countries are kleptocracies, competing kleptocracies. The main drive, the main thing that drives everyone from the commonest citizen to the upper level politician is self-enrichment, robbing the state and, you know, uh, living the good life. Okay, Gizem well, Alpian, you're shaking. Union I'm going to bring Gizem Alpian here because he's shaking his head in Birmingham. Would you like to come in here? I'm afraid uh, it's outrageous to call uh, all politicians in the Balkans thugs. Uh, there are decent law-abiding politicians who work hard. Unfortunately, they don't have I mean, much of a say. But the Balkans, they, they don't might work very hard, Mr. Alpin. They might work very hard. Sorry, they might work very hard, but they're not exactly, you might say, acting professionally to calm the situation down and even work together. They're not even talking to each other, the two parties in Albania. So how do you expect them to yeah. uh, gain the respect no, of the public when they're not actually discussing the issues at the, at the heart of the problem for the country? Absolutely. That's why the EU should be very should, should send a clear message to uh, politicians in Albania, both in the government and opposition, that uh, they should now change the tone. They should sit down and discuss 
And I think the Albanians have to address corruption, but they cannot address the issue of corruption on their own. They need help. And uh, Albanians have to, to learn that accountability comes if they are held responsible by Europe. And I'm afraid, as I said a bit earlier, they need help. EU should intervene and give the clear message to politicians in the Balkans, uh, and not only in the Balkans, in North Africa. You know what's mm -hmm. going on. I mean, there is a chain of corruption going on all over North Africa. So it's not only a, a Balkan problem, as one of my uh, the, the speakers said earlier. It's also an Italian problem. There is corruption at, at government level in Italy. Okay. It is a global problem. In, in, in uh, Albania, in the Balkans, it is, it is very serious. But we have to distinguish that uh, the level of corruption in Albania is high because the, the, the politicians are not uh, up, the, the, leading, the, the, the leaders at least, uh, they have let the, the country down. And this is a story of government after government after government, and the people are fed mm. up over the last 20 years. Well, you two gentlemen seem to disagree with each other. Let's go to Mohammed, who, of course, uh, is a correspondent for a major TV channel uh, based. Uh, out of Albania, but the correspondent in London. You've been listening to both sides of what those gentlemen had to say there, both in, in Birmingham and in Skopje. Uh, how, how do you react when somebody talks about your country in, in that manner and that really they're not worth bothering with or certainly Europe doesn't want them? Or, and then, the, uh, then uh, Gizem actually says that uh, they, your politicians work very hard. Do your politicians work very hard? I'm afraid the language which uh, Sam did use is not fair. Uh, I'd like to, to remind him, in 1990, when uh, communism fell in Albania, uh, people on Tirana Street said only a couple of words. We want Albania like the rest of the Europe. So Albanian people wants to be part on, um, on European family. Yes, uh, politicians uh, have, to, have to blame. Uh, they've tried their best. There are lots of problems. There are mm. lots of uh, disagreements. But they want, they are trying to get Albanian to European community. Uh, the method and the, the way which they are using is not uh, the right one. As Mr. Alpion said, the, uh, the corruption is a cancer on the heart of Albanian society. Uh, th they are trying hard, but I think it's not enough. It's not enough uh, because they don't have enough resources. Mm. And uh, on the cases, for example, when Top Channel uh, have shown uh, corrupted uh, politicians. Uh, they did blame Top Channel. Uh, on the, for example, on the case of Deputy Prime Minister, they said, well, uh, that, uh, that film is not, uh, is not true. Uh, and they were blaming uh, a leader of opposition mm. uh, as uh, somebody who produced that, uh, that video. Uh, and uh, the next day, when video was shown uh, on Top Channel, a Deputy Prime Minister said, well, I'm not going to resign. Two days later, he did resign because the minister, his minister who filmed uh, that conversation on his office, came to Top Channel on a top story program saying, well, I've got some other documents, I've got some other video implicating deputy prime minister. Okay, so they're not taking seriously the investigation which are shown on, uh, on the media. Gizem Alpion, can I bring you in here in terms of, uh, we're getting close to the end of our program. I mean, economic growth is affecting Albania. You know, the global economic sl sl uh, slump has hurt, has hurt all countries. Growth slowed to 2.8% in 2010. It had averaged 75 over the past eight years. How quickly does Albania have to sort or get its house in order for it to try and recover and, and be uh, a legitimate and useful member of the international community and to look after its own people? We have to recognize that over the last uh, 20 years, uh, uh, the Albanian people, um, they have achieved quite a lot. I mean, given from the very strict communist regime that they emerged uh, uh, at the beginning of 1990s, um, we shouldn't uh, say that nothing has been achieved. Uh, quite a lot has been achieved. The infrastructure has been improved. Um, uh, uh, people now are, if you like, uh, have a sense of asking, asking for their rights. The media is quite active. It's not completely free, uh, but then media is not free anywhere in the world. So there are achievements. The point is, where do we go from now? Um, I think the Albanian government has to sort out also the rights of hundreds and thousands of Albanians in Greece, in Italy. Albanians are still not allowed to leave their country as any decent human being should leave their country.
their country by, uh, by applying. Uh, this is not acceptable. And therefore, the moment we have to uh, stop our discussion. We've run out of time, but I'm sure it's a subject that we will be coming back to here on Inside Story. I'd like to thank all of my guests that have joined me on the programme today. Mr. Sam Vaknin in Skopje, Mr. Mohamed Vilu in London, and Gizem Albion in Birmingham. Gentlemen, thank you. And thank you for watching this edition of the programme. We do welcome your comments and suggestions. Please do email them to us at InsideStory at aljazeera.net. I'm Sahil Rahman. Thanks very much for your time and your company. Bye for now.